what what are you doing that toilet better have a bidet and somebody some little tiny fairy in there that's gonna wipe every morsel of poop off my butt cheeks for a thousand dollars Hello snack pack, welcome back to Travel Snacks. Today's episode is all about building a composting toilet in my van. In today's video, I'll be showing you how we built the toilet, how we added a urine diverter, and what products and tools and whatever all the things we used to make it all work together to make it a convenient place to go to the bathroom on the road. This is a very important topic when you live in a small space, so let's jump right in. We are not professionals. If you follow any of the things we do in this video, it's at your own risk. Taking care of my bathroom needs was one of the biggest issues when I was living in my car. So I knew that if I got a van and I was gonna build out my van, that the toilet would be a center of focus for me. So I wanted to have something that was easy to use, easy to clean, easy to store away. I watched a bunch of videos and a lot of videos talked about adding a urine diverter. And yet at the same time, the people that did add a urine diverter didn't give specific specific measurements and it wasn't really geared toward women and the way we use the bathroom. So I'm gonna take you back, pull out my toilet and show you exactly how it's set up so that if you want to, you can build one too. So to keep the toilet from sliding in and out while I'm driving, my dad installed these two eye hooks and then we had this bungee cord that just keeps it in place. So I just undo it and then slide it out. The toilet is on these little sliders, which I'll put a picture right here of what they look like, and I got them at Amazon. And so it makes it very easy to slide in and out. Now the way we built this is we cut this piece of wood to the height and then we notched it out here in the back. And then the front is just a regular plywood and then the bottom has a plywood as well. The, the top is also plywood, but we cut the hole and then glued this wood toilet seat on top of, and then it's hinged back here. Now, the reason that you see this excess back here is because I wanted a compartment in the back to hold all my supplies because there was extra room behind there, but there's also a wooden board back there. It doesn't allow the top part to go back as much which I'll show you in just a second. Under the refrigerator, there's this lid. So the top part of the toilet cannot go back that far, but there's still space past that lip under there. So I wanted to use all the space possible and I thought having this storage area would be a good idea. So what is in my storage area back here? A cleaning brush, some baby wipes or toilet wipes some extra trash bags that I ordered off of Amazon because I thought they were gonna be thicker, but they weren't and they were too expensive. And then some cheapy trash bags from the Dollar Tree that are super thin, that aren't that great. And then I have this container, which I'll talk about in a minute. And all that fits easily with extra room back here. Now the toilet. There's one strip of wood right here that's glued and nailed on with these two hinges. And then this is the plywood that we just cut a hole into. So it just goes up and down when I need to take out the bags. At first we bought a plastic toilet seat, but it was hollow and it had like a little bit of a gap and I didn't want anything to go under there. You're gonna mount this solid. It's not gonna be quick enough, right? Right. You mean it's gonna be held down in the back? Now I'm wondering if we should have just went with the wood one and just took off all the stuff, all the legs and all that back thing and just glued it on with the, with the that's gray, I, I, gray glue. I was just looking at that. These tabs are low enough, these tabs are high. I don't know why it's lifting up in the middle like that. I didn't know it did that. Okay. It looks stupid. That's, that's why I was telling you the story of the earth and it smells going to come out. There's no way to... This is what's holding it up. It's right, that's done. That's, that's not good. Unless you put the black all the way around there, glue it. The main thing is how am I going to get the bucket out? Make the frame so you just pull the key thing out and put the thing out. Leave, leave, the, leave the bucket in there. I don't know if you can pull your trash bag out. Unless we build the walls where it, this fits into the lip and I just lift this thing and it just pulls the wing out. Or I look, do it on a hinge. Yeah, the hinges is probably a good idea. That's probably the best bet. Build, like you just said, build this, so this lifts up, right? And you can, then you can take your bucket and whatever you have, a P-jar, whatever you have for the diverter, 
Like I said, this this is going to be a problem. Right. Not care. You don't want to smell that. I mean, I know you're going to cover it and everything, but that is so. I said, let's go get the wooden one. Like I said, we should have just bought both of them. <sighs> Glue it down onto the board. Even take this thing off. That, that's my idea. Yeah. Took this thing off. Take we'll the just, legs we'll off. just hinge this to the. And then we'll just put two hinges, which I'll buy. I got four some hinges. hinges. You know it would be super crappy if you didn't like this video. And while you're at it, you might as well subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you're interested in detailed stuff about toilet building, watch till the end. So we took that back and we got this wooden one. We took off the little feet and then we just glued this straight to the plywood. So when I was watching all these videos, I noticed that there were a lot of different people recommending composting toilets. And I looked up the cost to buy one and it is, get ready, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. The Nature's Head composting toilet is $1,000. A thousand. What? What are you doing? That toilet better have a bidet and somebody, some little tiny fairy in there that's gonna wipe every morsel of poop off my butt cheeks for a thousand dollars. There's no way I'm paying a thousand dollars for a toilet. I just, what? I was like, surely there's a better way. So when I was looking up videos, there was plenty of people showing how to make a less expensive composting toilet. A lot of people recommend just getting a five gallon bucket, but my space to build this toilet was a little bit shorter. I think it's like 14 inches, 13 or 14 inches. And I'm like, why do I need a five gallon bucket? How much poop am I trying to store in this toilet? I know myself, I don't really want poop just sitting in my van. So I guess even though this technically can be a composting toilet, I don't really compost with it. I might in the future, but usually I try not to do solids in here. And if I do, I just do it, bag it up and find a trash can, just pretty much right off. So this stuff is like potting soil. It comes in like a brick and then you just soak it and then you just like rip it apart and it becomes kind of like coffee grounds. And I used it. I did a number two and I put a bunch of this on top, but you have to use quite a bit and it did cover up the smell and you could probably just keep building poop stacks with this stuff. But I'm like, I don't feel like I need to do that. I feel like I could just do my business and then just throw it away. Also making this coconut core, you have to have like a bigger bucket because it makes so much. And plus it was like $10. I'll say that this does work if you want to use composting. So I was like, okay, if I don't need a five gallon bucket, what can I use? I can just use like a office trash can. I don't need that much space. It's just like one or two plops. It's not a big deal. Now, the thing that I was more concerned about and the thing that I wanted to spend more time on was finding the right pee container. I did not wanna to have to go pee and try to find a place to empty it and just do that every one or two times. I wanted to be able to go pee several times. And then if I was at a park or whatever, then I can just empty it out. So let me show you what I used and the things that I thought I was gonna use that I ended up not using. Okay, here we go. This is just a regular old classic waste basket from Walmart, a couple dollars, and it is a 3.4 gallon capacity. So just like a regular trash can, that's baking soda in there and a little bit of that coconut core. I just put like a black little mini trash bag in there. The other reason I didn't want to get a five gallon or three gallon bucket is because if you just use a bucket system without a diverter, for the most part, you're going to be going number one a lot more. And if you just don't use a diverter and you just have like one big bucket, you're going to have a sack of liquid that you're gonna have to like pull out and put into the trash. And if that gets any leaks or punctures or anything, you're gonna just have like a leaky bag just all over the place. So I wanted to use a trash can with a couple, actually I have a couple trash bags in here just in case. For the pee container, I was going to use a one gallon gas can, but then I realized that I couldn't see inside to see when it was getting full so i needed something clear and so i went on amazon and i found these like juice containers whatever and i got two of them so in case this one just gets gross or whatever i have another one i wanted something that was at least a gallon and this is a gallon and inside of here you'll see that there are little wooden things nailed in to keep that in place from shimmying around so it just kind of spits in there I also keep a box of baking soda to absorb odor. I keep a mixture of water and vinegar. That's for cleaning up this area, but also just to have for cleaning the van in general. And then I have a container of white vinegar because I clean out the container every time I empty it. Now, how am I filtering the peat into here directly? 
I'm using a canning funnel. And as you can see, there's a little piece of metal that's drilled in and then it has a hook on it. So it just hooks over and then it's just held into place. So it's just on there. And here you can see how we just glued the toilet seat. And then that fits directly in to the container. The lip kind of hits right here on the trash can. I also bought a regular oil funnel, but it was too tall. And what I mean by that is, if you look at this from the side, it's got like a low profile. It doesn't stick out like this far, like a funnel does. A funnel goes down slower, but this canning funnel, it's a little bit less deep. So when you close it down, it actually fits pretty evenly inside. So there's not much of a gap. Now, besides this container needing to be see-through, I also wanted it to be discreet. This could actually be like an orange juice or apple juice container. So when I take it out, I'm, somebody's not gonna be like trying to inspect what I have in here, I don't think. And usually I'll empty it at a park so nobody really sees me. But if they did, they might think that I'm just throwing away old apple juice, which is kind of gross, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And then I just got like a regular old like drain cover for a bath and I just put it right here. So just in case if I've filled the container pretty high, it doesn't slosh around and it kind of covers up if there's a little bit of a smell, but there's usually not a bad urine smell in here. So that's how that works. Now for the ladies out there, if you're anything like me, I was watching all these videos and I'm like, okay, but I need to know because there's not a big separation between where I go number one and go number two down in the little private areas. So I'm like, how do you know where? How do you know? Let me get my tape measure, which I always keep in my bag. And we're gonna measure this thing out. So this toilet seat is 15 and about like 15 and a half by 14. So when you go to Walmart or whatever, you'll get one that's that big. This hole is 10 and a half from the back to this front of this trash can, five and a half. Or if you wanna go from this, five. If you're gonna go from the back of the toilet seat to the front, basically seven and three quarters is the divider point. So then when you sit down, you're gonna have your privates kind of like right at the front. And so the urine's gonna go here. And then if you go number two, it's gonna be set up for the poop to fall right into this part. <laughs> now, how did I know to do this? Well, I'm the one that had to do the test, so you're welcome. So before we screwed anything in, we just kind of set everything on here and then I took it into the bathroom with some trash bags and I did a little test with one and two to make sure that this was the right configuration. So we shimmied it around like about quarter inch to half an inch, but this is what worked best. Also, fun fact, I don't know how fun it is, but before I decided on this canning funnel, I was going to use one of those pee pan container things that you can use to measure your pee. And it was pretty flimsy and I didn't really like the way it sat because it would like raise up. It just wasn't the right solution. And I feel like because it was plastic, it was going to crack over time and I didn't want to do that. And plus the metal on here is stainless and it's used for canning. So when people do canning, they use vinegar. And so I knew this would stand the test of time and it's easy to clean. So once I go to the bathroom, I always wipe this out and put this thing on and then I just slide it back. And because of that lip, you gotta like, kind of like shimmy it around and push it the right way. I'm used to it now. And just lock it into place. Snack time. Snack time.